Ever since my early teens, music had a big influence on my life. One might say it was an obsession. My name is Ken Loxton. Watching television shows like Ed Sullivan, The Midnight Special, and American Bandstand was my first introduction to an amazing raw talent that the music industry offered. I knew then there was no going back. Music had to be a big part of my life. Turning my attention to Canadian music, I can remember listening to artists like the Stampeders, Paul Anka, Gordon Lightfoot, and the Crew Cuts, and wondered if they would be as successful in today's era as they were back then. With music legends slowly disappearing, what will happen to our Canadian music scene? Is the new generation ready to fill the void? Will Canadian indie artists ever be given the opportunity for radio play? Or will we be forced to listen to the same old artist time after time? Join us as we explore some of Canada's hidden talents as we start our journey in my hometown of Winnipeg, Manitoba. I mean, being a Canadian artist, I love it. I, I am so supportive of Canadian music, especially like the 60s and 70s genre. But that comes back to a time when Canadian content was ultimately important on our radio stations and our television programming. And, you know, we... I think it still is, whether you like... I mean, I hope well, so. you, you can argue about what the stuff is that actually does get promoted, but Canada actually cares about its arts. I and you can't it. say that about everywhere else. No, and that's our government, and that's our communities, and that's... It's more than just the artists and the music. There's a support in our country for the arts. And even at a time where we're seeing globally the dismantling of music programs and conservation um, programs and things like this that are supposed to be saving our countries, Canada is on the forefront of always wanting to be progressive and, and help people and move forward. So I think we do that with our artists too. I wish it was a little stronger in 2019, 2020, but maybe that's what we're returning to and that will be an ease of the struggle. It will be a little less of a load on the people. I think we will break into radio because we have great opportunities coming up in Europe through TV and film soundtracks, and I think that's the medium to get through. You might break into radio over there. I don't but, think here. But on our own, just here, we, I don't think we can. Here, I think, at least in the current climate of radio, it's too streamlined. It, it, even the new bands that are coming out, uh, it, in at least in the rocks, because that's what I listen to is mostly the rock spectrum. The new bands that are coming out just sound like the old bands from yeah. like 20 years ago, and that's not a complaint because. You know, there's those, not those, a new, those old bands haven't no released new genre, a new song in 20 years. You know, there's no new genre that kind of comes and develops and builds the scene. It's pretty it's stagnant. Just, For me, it, w it would just be making a living. Yeah. Being able to focus on music. Making it big would mean not needing a day job and not having to split my time between two jobs and trying to write music and trying to rehearse in a band. Wouldn't it be amazing just to focus on one thing? Yeah, I don't need to be a millionaire. I just yeah. need to make basically what I'm making now at my day job, but just be able to focus on music for eight hours a day. Yeah. When I think about what we've produced and created over our history as Load, and all the distractions and what people have had to do in their daily life to make that happen, I find it unbelievable that we were able to create anything because we're, everybody's spread thin. But if you had the chance to just do that one thing, oh my goodness, I think we would we would make amazing art. You can put on a classic rock station in Calgary, Toronto, Winnipeg, Vancouver, it doesn't matter, They're, they all have the same list of songs. And, and, and every radio station is so formatted that it's, it, there's no room for anything that's kind of fringe. There's no room for anything that sounds different. Even the bands that are being played that are new sound like your Led Zeppelins and your ACDCs or I mean if it's a different for, if it's a different formula yeah. it just sounds like a bouncy or Madonna your song. Your Barry or, White, your Madonna, whatever, yeah. exactly. So it's it, even even the new music that's getting played on radios is still just the old, it's, it, they, they'll only play stuff that's safe, that they, they know, you know, people are going to at least be able to tap their foot to. That, that, so there's no room for a fringe artist, for for uh, a, a different sounding metal band or like what Load is with the, the, the ambient folk, all the different influences that go into Load or 
a anything that I've seen locally that I've liked has been, I've liked it because it sounds different. different. It sounds new. It sounds fresh. Original, which is what original music is supposed to be. Yet through radio, it's funneled into this cookie cutter generic kind of format. Well, and I think, I think I've, I've said this about artists too, with you were asking about the music industry needing to do better listen to the artists because they're the ones with their ears to the ground that know what's going on. Yeah. You know, part of the problem with DJs is that they don't have freedom. They're, 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 they're not, they're not, they're told what to say. Well, that's it, right? Cases, so and they're the told link. what to play. The link so if missing. you get a DJ who's a rock DJ, he might have a different taste than the DJ that's on, you know, two hours after him. And people will tune in to hear it's like, cause they like this guy's particular taste. But they can't do that because they've got that list of 50 songs that needs to be played. Yeah. So you, you And get the, even if you get a chance, that one DJ gives you that chance. I mean, we could go back to the Wolfman days, right? Where the Wolfman, that DJ made or broke you. You know, if you were on that program, it was a good thing. Today, you, could, you get played once, it's not enough. No, not, you know what? If Britney Spears was... At nobody in one hit of her song that's not enough they put a lot there's a machine that goes behind the advertising and the amount of plays those people get so if you even go on a tenth of that eh? like a one percent of that I think too like there's two things that universally people always will watch they, they and they're always entertained by it. and it's people being exceptionally good at something yes. and people <laughs> having fun so if you can do at least one of those things, then you will draw people. Like, if you look like you're having fun on stage, people will be drawn to that. Also, if you're really good, people will be drawn to that too. But if you can put those two together, like, you really can't ask for much more than you just kind of got to hope that you're, you know, you can network at that point. Load, you know, speaking for our band, we have a great, like, charisma on stage. Everybody really goes into a sacred place with each other and we are all about trying to produce the art that's coming within. Sometimes we forget that anybody else is even around and we are really just, we dig each other and that comes across and that is always something that's taken away with people when they see that people love what they're doing and they love each other. For me, it's very important for the entire uh, career of load, which expand, um, you know, spans four CDs and amazing collaborations between people across this globe. Actually, um, staying true to the art, to what motivates us, to the emotion, to the spirit of the music is the ultimate importance. In the end, obviously, the money or the fame or the notoriety isn't the most important when it comes to wanting your craft to come through.
you know, once, once you stop staying true to your musical style, then, then there's no point in doing what you're doing. Uh, that's, that's not to say, you know, don't grow as an artist and don't try different things. Uh, but, you know, if staying true to yourself means putting out the same songs on the same album every time, then that's, that's you. And if, uh, you know, if it's something else, then it's something else. But, uh, yeah, staying true to yourself musically is the whole, is the whole point. The industry itself is not gonna, it's not gonna change unless it has to. Um, I think it's a matter of, you know, finding as an artist or, or as a, uh, maybe like a small label or, or a venue or what have you, just finding other ways to be successful around that. You know, you're not gonna make money on recording anymore. Uh, so there's more and more bands doing uh, alternative merch ideas and subscription services, things like that. Um, so yeah, whatever, whatever, you know, I can say the industry's doing wrong, they're not gonna, they're not gonna make moves. So, so it's up to us, I think. I, I feel like you, uh, as a Canadian artist, you can get away with a little bit more than, uh, you know, maybe, maybe some artists from, from other places. Uh, you know, for example, Megadeth Slayer, they've, they've got to write songs about, uh, about war, about, about blood and, and, you know, that's kind of their thing and they have to stick to it, but uh, bands like Annihilator can get away with writing songs about Kraft Dinner and, you know, um, so yeah, I think as a Canadian you get away with more and, uh, you know, to counter that, the, the cities are a lot further apart, the weather is, is worse, especially in Winnipeg, but uh, uh, that said, that's probably why our, why our music scene is, is so healthy and so good, our underground scene is so good, because either, you know, eight months of the year it's too cold to go outside, you play hockey or you play music. Being able to do this all day, every day, having it, having it pay the bills. Um, you know, we're all, we're all here for the same reason. We've all got day jobs where, uh, you know, and music is a thing we get to do on the side. It's like, you know, six, if six days a week you, you, you wake up and you make breakfast and you go to work and then on that seventh day you get to wake up, make breakfast and, and go play a show or, uh, or record or, or do something like this. Uh, that's, that's that one day we live for. And making it big is getting to do that every day. Let's stop a moment.
Invincible, incredible, unstoppable, poor, but chain, unbeatable, unbreakable, unstoppable, poor, but chain, unbeatable, incredible, unstoppable, poor, but chain, you are the poor, but chain. Slave unto the king, don't want to pass. Why part of the battle is unrest? Yeah, I bring a human life to the need. I'll put you down, be calling number two. Rush you in his half ass, stop you on earth. Let the youth fly, lag machine is full and black. Invincible, incredible, I tell all poor machine. Unbeatable, unbreakable, and some of all. I put them all, and them all, and some of all poor machine. Beware the poor machine. We were talking about that. We uh, we don't really know. We don't know yet. I mean, we haven't really seen that the other side of stuff. But I mean, when you're when you're being the unknown artist, it's kind of easier to uh, to have a little more of that creative freedom where you can do do kind of what you want, and you don't have you don't have that pressure, those deadlines, right? We're just trying to we're just trying to keep you know the four of us happy. So at the end of the day, it's just about having some fun with some of your buddies. And I think it's just. Uh, it's more of if like you have you have like an idea <laughs> and there's like a lot of like potential behind that idea I guess and you're able to make it make that idea or that dream kind of become a reality which it could be it could be as big as you want or even as small as you want I mean you know we're a local band if we can play a big local show here we'd consider making that big but there's also the other side of something where you know hey let's the biggest you can think of is playing, you know, Wembley Stadium or something or like Red Rocks or something like that, which would be also just crazy. But I mean, that's, there's a, a couple different avenues you can take with it. It depends if enough people want to hear us play. I think that's kind of the, the, the gist of it, right? If, if there's a lot of people that kind of like our music and starts to gain a little traction, maybe there's a chance some radios pick it up or something, but I'd hope so. Be, be cool. It'd be weird. It'd be a weird thing to hear, my, like one of our songs on the radio. And we were a little bit on. Uh, there's like a, you know, a local university radio station that had us on there, but getting on like, like a, a playlist on some Spotify or Apple Music or something, or getting a little YouTube stuff. It's. I think it's, I'd say it's more of a group feel, like what everyone else wants, and like we kind of come to an agreement as a as a whole rather than individually. Uh, if you go individually, I think you can ask some of our, especially our guitarist. He's not uh, not too fond of it, but he does it because we we like doing it as a group and making the group sound. It's cold. the feeling and you never know what it's like cause I never ever did you wrong and I can't breathe just set me free evermore evermore by me
Thank you. You know, for me, as a blues musician, that's the genre that I choose to do and want to do. Um, I sort of grew up playing uh, music with my dad, and we sort of learned all the old, old time music, you know, a lot of uh, Hank Williams, Patsy Cline, all of that stuff that we played for years with my dad. And so when I moved uh, into, uh, moved to Winnipeg, uh, I had been sort of playing some bluegrass music before that, but then moved to Winnipeg and it was such a great blues community and I really, really started getting involved in the blues, blues community. Huge across Canada and the world and even more so here in Winnipeg because we have a tremendous amount of very, very talented, talented musicians here. So you know looking at that wide base of musicians is just amazing and it's hard to it's hard to uh, you know be in that community and not work on your own music you know so that's and that's the important part of it you know to be in a in, within that musician base in Winnipeg you know and I often say to my my guys in the band you know and and sometimes and a lot of it has to do with club owners and people that are are paying you to play. You know, it's it's and people say, oh, you know, you can play for free. It'll be great exposure for you, and that's ridiculous because it's not like it's not like we don't uh, put money into our equipment, our time, our rehearsal time. All of that is a huge amount that we put in to be musicians. And it's not like you would ask a plumber to come in and do your plumbing for nothing. You know, that would never happen, right? That's part of our craft and our trade and that's part of what we do as as work as well. You know, so club owners are like, oh, well, you know, you can play for the door. No, we're not gonna play for the door. We'll, you know, and we're just not going to. And the other flip side of that is that being a, an experienced musician and a good musician, we don't want to play for nothing. But we have young musicians that are up and coming who will play for nothing. And they're really, really damaging the industry for us that are professional musicians. Now, for me, promoting myself is I have started to create my own events. So by creating Women in Blues, uh, events once a year, creating women in jazz, because I do sing with the jazz trio as well, creating blues of palooza, um, being part of that blues community. That's how I do my own promotion, just by creating those events so that I can get other, other people who are in the blues genre and other women who are in the blues genre noticed in that type of, in that type of setting. Otherwise, we would just be another blues band playing in another club. I think there's a lot of things that we need to do better. Um, you know, working with younger musicians, uh, fostering their ideas on how to, and helping them to uh, generate themselves in this community of musicians, for sure. I mean, we do have Manitoba Music, and they do have classes, but I, I think that that could be a little bit more proactive in terms of uh, assisting people in how to fill out grants, how to work with situations, how to negotiate contracts, how to do recordings, doing recording sessions. And a lot of those classes or things that workshops that happen are during the day. And so if you're a full-time employee and a musician, it's really, really difficult. And we all know that uh, it's hard to be a full-time musician and make a living at it. As an unsigned artist, it's really difficult because you don't have the, the backup of having a signed contract or recording contract with someone. Although, that being said, there are sometimes more benefits to yourself. So if you're in it for the money, you have to almost sign a contract with somebody. If you're in it for your, you and your music and yourself, then being an independent artist is probably the way to go. I think, I think we're unique in Canada that we do have and I think even more so in Winnipeg because we are centralized and we have a really strong music community here and we have lots of support from club owners and people like Times Change 
lots of uh, local artists that are famous, Rami Mays, Big Dave McLean, uh, really incredible up and coming artists. So I think in Canada, we're, we're uh, pretty fortunate. I think making it big to me is just, uh, you know, being successful within myself and my own music and playing where I would like to play. I hear these women raving about their monkey man, about their no good husbands and their trifling friends. These poor women sit around all day and moan, wondering why the loving papas never come home. Why women, wild women don't get the blues. A wild women, wild women don't get the blues. If you got a man, don't ever be in the square. Cause if you do, you'll have a woman everywhere Never been known to treat no one man right I keep them working hard both day and night A wild women, wild women don't get the blues A wild women, wild women don't get the blues I've got a disposition and a way of my own Starts kicking to make him find another home. You full of good liquor, walk the streets all night. I put my man out if he don't treat me right. Oh, wild women, wild women don't get the blues. Oh, wild women, wild women don't get the blues. Yay! Change your ways and get real wild Wouldn't tell you nothing, wouldn't tell you no lies Wild women are the only women that ever get by Wild women, wild women don't get the blues Wild women, wild women don't get the blues Get the blue. Oh, yeah. Well, you. Uh, the struggles would be basically just being able to make a living while doing what it is that you most want to do, you know, because we have a vision for our music. And uh, 
sometimes it can be hard to be able to pursue that, find the time for that when you're just trying to make a living. If, unless you've got something else that you're doing to make money, if, if music is, is bringing in the income, if that's your bread and butter, then you have to balance things out. And uh, that, that's the main struggle. And also, um, you're not always dealing with a musically educated public. So, and everybody's opinion counts. So you're, you're, you're at the mercy of, of opinion, regardless of who may be giving it. And, and of course, as everyone knows, the competition is massive. Every, there's everybody and, and his sister plays guitar or sings or does something musical. And uh, yeah, that, there, there's a lot of, of people trying to get those few little places to play and record and get exposure. It is very important to me. I mean, I have always said that the number one thing that I look for when I'm playing in a musical situation is what are we going to play? Not how much money am I making from the gig, but what is the music that we're going to play? Uh, that being said, if you're having trouble paying your water bill, if they're going to turn off the lights to your place, Again, my goal, I can only speak for myself, has always been to make my living playing my guitar with these hands. And uh, I've never wanted to do anything else. It's, it's always less painful to play music, even if it's not exactly what I'm pursuing, the type of music that I want to pursue. Um, I think in some ways, fortunate for me, I have a very wide appreciation. So I can get hired for a gig and really appreciate a lot of the music. I don't usually get asked to do a lot of things that, that would really just be very distasteful to me. I think most of the people I deal with know where I'm coming from and, and what I'm about. But uh, so it's again, it's a balancing thing. Uh, what's most important to me is the music. I want to play what I most would love to play. And guess what? That's probably the most difficult thing if you're trying to play music and make money, at least in my situation. Well, it used to be in the old days, gimmick. Um, hey, sex appeal, baby. <laughs> you, can't, you can't beat it, right? Uh, yeah, and, and, and what does that have to do with art? Of course, um, this is one, one of the things I loved about Frank Zappa and you know, the early bands, that, or a, a lot of his bands, I mean, you, uh, you, you would never you know, judge the band on their looks. They would l look so, so freaky and crazy. Um, and then the music would be spectacular. Uh, it should be uh, you know, a listening art. We listen to music but a lot of times it turns into people are listening with their eyes. So quite often it's something visual that will catch people. And that creates a lot of other complications. But uh, you never know. It's, it's, it's not the same for everybody. And uh, if, you can, if you can get the right song into the right ears, who knows what can happen. Of course today, if you want to get noticed, exposure, etc., freedom. Freedom to play exactly what you want. And it's funny because I guess that there are people who have made it big who might say the opposite. Ah, they made it big, and now it's, it's, like, it's like, be careful what you wish for. Because now you have to play that hit song every time you play. And now there's pressure to repeat what you've done before over and over and over. Uh, yeah, I guess that could be the case. For me, I can just only imagine uh, if you've made it big, there's a certain amount of success. We equate success with financial freedom. If you've got financial freedom, well, do what you wanna do.
Stop! 